five women stand as living proof that dreams can be turned into reality regardless of the odds stacked against them. I don't have the money so I can't invest. The biggest lie you could tell yourself. Find the investment first because then it becomes real, then it becomes tangible, then it's like, oh my gosh, I really want this. And then you put your mind to work on how you're going to get it. And that's where the fun happens. Oprah Winfrey, the founder of OWN. Whitney Wolf Hurd, the founder of Bumble. Barbara Cochran, the mastermind behind the Cochran Group. Kim Kiyosaki, the other half to the Rich Dad Company. And Rihanna, the pop star turned makeup tycoon, have left indestructible marks and have valuable insights to offer to those looking to make their dreams a reality. And welcome to the very first National Oprah Winfrey Show! First lesson is from Oprah Winfrey, an iconic media mogul who has shown us that by being true to ourselves and embracing our unique journeys, we can connect with others on a profound level. And by doing this, you can be successful beyond your wildest imagination. What I realized is through the whole process, because I'm grounded in my own self, I work at staying awake. And being awakened is just another word for spirituality, but spirituality throws people off and they think you mean religion. I ask you, what's your spiritual practice? What do you do to take care of yourself? And I just had a conversation with John Mackey, who runs Whole Foods yeah. and has written this fabulous book. You should get it called um, Conscious Capitalism. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how the investment in the stakeholders, the people who you are serving, that connection between the people who you're trying to serve and sell to is equally as important as the people who you're buying from, right. equally as important as the people who are you know, supporting you financially, um, as your stockholders if you are you know, you know, a public company. So I always understood that there really was no difference between me and the audience. Our second lesson is from Whitney Wolf Hurd, a tech visionary and the force behind Bumble. Her experience of facing gender bias and harassment in the tech industry ignited the spark for Bumble, an app that empowers women to make the first move. Whitney's journey reminds us that you don't have to accept the status quo. No matter how many people tell you that you can't, Whitney reminds us that you in fact can and should. Making the first move and taking that first step can change your life. But you have to do it. No one, no one can do it for you. And I learned that the hard way. I, I had very little support along the way in terms of advocates or community. You know, I had a handful of people I could call upon. But candidly, even when I was starting Bumble, all of my confidants, with the exception of a couple, were like, no, don't do this. Why? Why would you expose yourself to this? What's the point? That won't work. There's already dating apps. They're going to eat you alive. Da -da 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 and you can get bogged down in that. You know, it's really, it's easy to drown in that noise. Our third lesson is from Barbara Cochran, who transformed herself from a waitress into a real estate tycoon and TV personality. Barbara reminds us that even menial jobs can teach us something to help us create an empire. To me, I would take any job, not based on pay, but gee, what could I learn? What could I learn? because that made you more valuable. I never really thought it made you more valuable to be paid more. But hey, I haven't done this before. Let's see what this is about. And you learn skills. I think I learned more through my waitressing jobs. I always had a few at once. You know, you could always get a waitress job behind a counter. I think I learned more about people waitressing than building my business, honest to God. You have to size someone up. Your territory is your counter. You have to make them happy. You want to upsell them a little bit. Maybe you say, you know, you can give the second cup of coffee for free, but how about a slice of cheesecake is really good today. You learn how to hustle. You learn how to be organized, how to get the containers in order, how to make sure they're filled when the customer steps out, how to get the, that person something to drink while you're working on this person. I mean, I learned so much in every one of those jobs. And you know what's great about having a lot of jobs? You start to get a profile of what you're good at and what you're not. And I, in short order, after maybe seven or eight jobs, not that I knew what I was going to do for a living, but I knew what I was good at. I knew I was good at getting along with people and making them smile. I could talk to somebody and make them happy, absolutely. And I also knew that I was efficient. I could create a system in anything. I would see a, the diner counter all wrong, not running right. I would talk to the boss, say, you know, if you did this with the maple syrup and change the sugar, and I could, like an executive, I could rearrange the whole counters, you know, in an efficient manner. And I started learning that those were my two gifts, people and efficiency. 
And if you think about any business, those are really big ticket items. If you could choose people, motivate people, get along with people, make them get along with each other, plus create systems to grow a big business. I mean, the minute you have more than a half dozen people, you need systems. And my companies were always so well organized that it, they ran like, they just ran like a Swiss clock. Is that a good analogy? Everything was in its place. Nothing had to be duplicated. It was fast forward. And so I was able to build very quickly, which I had to do because we had big people in my market. And if I had built and replicated systems at a normal pace, I would never catch up to them. So I had to do double, triple time. And what's your answer on that one? Systems, systems get you moving forward, get you a, get, get a business like a machine, you know? And that was a gift I got from my menial jobs. Thank God I worked. Imagine if I hadn't worked and went out into the real world thinking I was dumb that I couldn't do anything. Our fourth lesson is from Kim Kiyosaki, best-selling author and businesswoman, who alongside her husband, Robert Kiyosaki, are determined to teach others the importance of financial education. Kim's biggest realization came when she realized that the school system wasn't one that allowed people to delve into their own interests and improve upon that. Kim reminds us that there are multiple right pathways to success in getting rich, and to not get stuck in the employee mindset that the education system is trying to teach you. I mean, if you look at school, it's opposite of what it takes to be successful in real life. Don't make a mistake. Do as you're told. Take, take tests by yourself. Don't cooperate. Do it by yourself. Do it on your own. And um, the last thing was, uh, oh, there's only one right answer. No, there's tons of answers to a, a problem. So you come out of school scared to death of making a mistake. You do everything on your own. You don't cooperate. There's no synergy. There's no brainstorming. And there's only one right answer. Everybody wants to get the right answer. There's no one right answer. So I think people come out of school paralyzed. I think the school system is criminal in that it kills a child's spirit of learning. You know, some, a child goes into school all excited about, yeah, I'm going to learn and it's going to be great. And then the teacher says, sit down and shut up. Don't talk. We don't care what you're interested in. Did anybody in school ever ask you, did a teacher ever ask you, Brian, what are you interested in? I, I, I never did. I never did. So they just teach you what they want to teach you instead of finding out what the child is interested in and teaching to that. So I think, I think kids come out of school scared to death of making a mistake. They come out paralyzed. They don't know what they want to do because their, their spirit and their creativity has been crushed inside of them. So you almost have to do a whole reprogramming once you get out of school so you can find... So you can find out what, what it is that, that excites you, what it is that, that where your passion is. You know, we just launched a, <coughs> excuse me, a product on finding out what's most meaningful to you. Because once you can discover what's most meaningful, then decisions and, and life become so much easier because there's more joy, there's more better communication with relationships. But they don't teach any of this in school. They just say, sit down, do as you're told, take the test by yourself and don't make a mistake. Our fifth and final lesson is from none other than Rihanna, a pop star turned business tycoon. Her biggest pieces of advice are important for entrepreneurs, new and old, to add to their business practices to ensure that not only their businesses are successful, but that they're taking care of themselves as they build and grow. You have to work really hard, a lot of sleepless nights, um, do not quit, um, but also try to take breaks. And I gotta give myself that advice. You've got you to gotta take breaks just to check in with yourself. Through their experiences, these women have shown us that success isn't just about amassing wealth. It's about creating change, inspiring others, and leaving a legacy. Their stories are a testament to the power of grit, perseverance, and resilience, and they serve as an inspiration for all of us. What lessons stuck out the most to you? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe to keep up with our latest videos. When you're getting ready in the morning, when you're exercising, or when you just need a little boost, download Mindset and listen to your favorite motivational speeches while getting ready for the day.